Welcome to US360 Snapshots, I'm Nils Ocant. Today we will take a trip to a paradise island called Hawaii. It is here where there is important work being done. Given that Suchi Foundation was created in Taiwan, much of the thoughts, teachings and history of the founder Dama Master Zenyan has been recorded in Mandarin. But to reach the mainstream American audience, these stories, books and magazines must be translated into English. Volunteer Stephanie Fan saw this need and formed a translation team in Hawaii. So let's go meet them. So um, in, I think it was 1999, um, every single time when I went back to Taiwan and they asked input, I would write that, that the master teaching should be translated in English for many years. At that time, uh, they couldn't find anyone. We actually was tested. We actually translated two episodes and was circulated among the, the executive in Taiwan and it's approved that you know, this group can do it. So we started doing this dominance water translation. And with that, with that project, it, the, the doors opened. <laughs> It's very difficult to find one with all the language skills, so we had to have different language skills to combine them into a big team. So there are three major points to this translation principle. We call it FAT, FAT, F-A-T. So FAT, F means fidelity or faithfulness. It means that uh, we are translating the spirit and the essence of the teachings into the language. A means artistry. An artful translation means it's enjoyable to read. And T means transparency. Transparency means that an English reader, someone who knows nothing about the organization, nothing about Buddhism, nothing about Chinese language or culture, will be able to read the material and understand it. So we are the bridge that allows cultures and languages and ideas to meet. No changes are ever made and no deletions are ever made without everyone meeting together and talking about it. Anyone who's ever used Google Translate knows that if you just put a sentence in and ask it to translate it, it will give you a broken translation. I'm currently the translation manager for the Dharma's Water editorial team. I love talking to him because he always brings a new perspective to things. We have the opportunity to take Master Zheng Yan's teachings and really bring them to a wider audience, bring them to an English-speaking audience. I'm very grateful to have Alex here because he speaks both languages. So it's important that he translates the work and then I work with him. After all these uh, periods of training, he, he now is our editorial manager. He runs the editorial team. I remember meeting with Stephanie for the interview and I knew right there and then that every decision I've made in my life, every job I've had, every move I've made was to end up right here in Hawaii working for Tsuchi USA. I took off my shirt and I showed Stephanie the tattoo on my back which brought her to tears because it spelled out the master's teachings about unconditional love, honesty, respect, and trust. Timber is really great too. I work with really great people. I like Timber the first day I met him. He's got this incredible, you know, fountain of energy that he really brings to the table. I don't speak a word of Chinese, which actually helps me. What Alex does, for example, is translate it from Chinese to English, and then I go and translate it from English to English. My mom moved us here when I was about seven, and I have traveled and I've lived in other places, and I think Hawaii is the best. It's exciting and sometimes exhausting to listen to how much she does, how many jobs she holds. And, and she's an acupuncturist, you know, trained to be, and, and she's willing to help others. And, and I just see her gentleness. It just basically is what equality of Tsuji volunteers. So Lily has worked with us in a number of different capacities. She's definitely multi-talented. She just kind of fills in uh, wherever we need her. Background in college is English major. So she's an editor. She has been an editor. After the translation has been done, um, I read through all the English um, to fix grammar or to highlight things that don't really make sense in English. Sometimes when I feel something is lost in translation. So it's a joint effort of mutual understanding and respect for one another. Um, we 
we don't want this to be just about uh, a thinking process. You know, editing can be very cerebral. You're trying to come up with the perfect sentence or the right word. So I think we all take it upon ourselves to really get involved, to have the first-hand experience so that we know in our hearts what the teaching is about. And if we don't have the English materials, uh, there's no way that the, 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 the younger generation who come into Ciji. Okay, I don't read Chinese and I don't speak Mandarin. All the teachings that I have learned from the master is only through English and the English is from the translations that we've done. If there was no translation team, I wouldn't be a part of Tsuji. Timber wouldn't be a part of Tsuji. Lily wouldn't be a part of Tsuji. A lot of local volunteers in LA, in Northern California, all over the United States would not be a part of Tsuji. The Chinese are being used by the Chinese population, but the English-speaking uh, you know, population do not have the opportunity to uh, to see the teaching, read the teaching firsthand. You know, the master's teaching is too important to only be available in, in one language. The future of Tsuji lies in honestly non-Chinese speaking populations. And this is what the, the, the translation work is all about. To bring the teaching of purification of the heart uh, to making a reality. But the way that she said it is, is one give rise to infinity, infinity arise in one. While the Hawaiian volunteers are bridging the gap between Suchi and the English-speaking world, they also focus on the formation of spiritual connections. Many people in our world believe in the notion of separation between the mind and the body. But for volunteer art teacher Ching Kim, the two processes are very much intertwined. Ever since her childhood, Ching has believed that art is an act that can bridge the physical and mental being. Now, as an adult, she is teaching this idea through painting. Let's go join her for today's art class. All my life I draw, I paint. To enjoy painting and drawing is, is good. But I think from that, I gain more experience, you know, with like to, to deal with the people. And now I'm an art teacher. But I think that I'm not actually focusing to teaching the kids how to draw and paint. I'm teaching the kids art therapy is a hearing, you know, it's a heal. You can heal something, you know, and then you can apply the heal thing to become, you know, the art of living. So this way, right, when you see the whole picture, right, you can see, wow, there's an angle right here. Okay, there's an interesting angle right here. Okay, let's go. Kids who come to the class, they're having a bad day, you know, struggling. And then when they draw, they express their feeling. Kind of like make it really natural. And you know, they're good day, they're happy, they draw happily. Arts is uh, important for, I think, whole brain thinking. You know, you have to demonstrate take care of a certain part of your brain, but with the arts, you can be creative, you can express yourselves, and you can have what I call creative thinking. But all of that is good for brain development. So if students are, are to grow intellectually, the arts have a significant piece in that. I want to show you, uh, this is eventually one of these girls, you know, I think, I remember her name is called Lisa. I was uh, with her, you know, to do in the painting and that, and then she has uh, cancer, you know, it's actually in her stomach already, it's really big. So when I teach her, she was really have a big impact to teach me. Life is, you know, treasures. I'm actually the last day of, the, you know, of my stage. But every time that I do something, I really have to treasure, you know. And uh, this is actually the group of kids that, you know, they forget about their, their you know, illness and they forget about their, um, you know, their suffering. It reminds me, you know, the Master Chen Yen saying that, you know, at the moment, you know, it just has to be, you know, that, that focusing on that moment. While the visual arts and even performance arts are uniquely suited to bridging the body and mind, sometimes the mind is divided upon itself. In uncertain and troubling times, self-doubt, second-guessing, frustration or anger can cloud one's judgment. Many people work through these issues through writing. Jimmy Wu, a former prison inmate we have met on previous episodes, is one person that uses writing to come to greater understanding and growth. 
very grateful to invite Jimmy Wu to um, our facility today. Actually, we invited him uh, last year in March. That's, that was the first time he came to the old facility and gave our uh, young member a speech. It was well, really well received. Uh, many parents and students are so interested and inspired by his speech, so, uh, so we invited him back. Straight A's when I was younger. When he wrote about how he was angry and stupid and young, and then he found um, a outlet through writing. I could completely relate to that because I, I myself, like whenever I'm angry or something, then I usually use writing to express that. And it's very important for people to find that outlet when they're angry. So I, I, I thought that was like a beautiful part. I got arrested and I thought that this friend that I had would stick with us, would stick with me and my other crime partner. And none of us were going to blame anyone. We were just going to fight, go through this together. We committed this crime together. We would um, suffer from the consequences and take our punishment together. But he was advised by his attorney not to do that, not to break, to, to actually break the code of silence. And so on one day, while we were still in juvenile court, fighting our juvenile fitness hearing, he testified against me and my other crime partner. And he got on the stand and basically said that he was acting direct, uh, uh, under duress, which meant that he felt his life was in imminent danger. That if he did not commit this crime with us, we were going to hurt him. That I directly was going to hurt him. So that's his, that was his excuse to the courts of why he committed this, with this crime. After he testified against us, they split us apart. And I never saw him again. Going back to my room at Central Juvenile Hall that day, completely devastated. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this guy did this. And I was furious. I was so angry. And so fast forward all these years in prison, I never forgot about him. And every time I thought about him, I was just so consumed with rage, with fury. Um, and I had these constant fantasies of what I actually wanted to do to him. And I was hoping for the day to be able to act out on my revenge, to be able to make him pay for what I believed he did to me directly. Your brother's gonna die. If he hadn't released all his emotions like that, if he hadn't forgiven um, the, the, the accomplice of his, he would have very likely done something very violent. He could have hurt other people, and then it would just send him back, in, back into jail, back into basically the beginning of that cycle where he started, he was in juvie, he was in jail. It would just, everything would just start over again. He wouldn't progress. There would be no, I guess, end to this cycle for him. So I think that um, being able to have that kind of control is, is very important. A few months ago, I was on Facebook and I happened to see his name pop up. I sat there looking at him and all these emotions course through my body. And then I thought about everything that I've gone through, about the person that I am today, about all the people that believe in me, about the belief I now have in myself, about learning about restorative justice, about healing. No, you know, healing for me, healing for my victims, the victims' families, the, the community, just healing all around. And I said, you know what? I'm going to forgive this person. Not because I really want to forgive him, but because I want to heal. I don't want to always have this anger, this, all these frustrations, all this resentment towards him, to, towards our justice system every time I think about him. I want to forgive him and just move on to finally get rid of this shadow that is always constantly following me. So I typed him a personal message on Facebook and I sent it to him and I told him that I understood that we are 16 years old when we committed our crime, that we are both equally terrified of the potential outcome of our case, and that I was actually glad, and really glad, not no longer sarcastic, but really glad that he didn't have to go through 13 and a half years of hell the way that I did, and that I wished him the very best, that I forgave him, and that he, I hope he would take care of himself, and that was it. And as soon as I did that, within minutes, I just felt this huge sense of relief, like this huge burden had to be lifted from my shoulders, up from my shoulders. And I sat there, I started crying. I started crying because 
I was an emotional wreck and just finally being able to let go of all this hate and this resentment and finally feel nothing but relief and peace and serenity. It just consumed me with this overwhelming sense of joy. So why should you constantly put yourself through suffering when you can relieve yourself of this unnecessary suffering? So when I forgave him, I relieved myself of the suffering. By forgiving the man who wronged them, Jimmy Woo not only bridged the divide within himself, but he reached out to form ties with the community. No matter which community you are in, know what place you hold in it. These ties to those around us makes each individual stronger. Connie Calderon, a volunteer at the Tsuchi Free Clinic in Wilmington, California, also shares how her experience with the clinic makes her community stronger. Yeah, it feels good to give, but you know, to receive is also good. And that's what I've been receiving. I've been receiving a lot of love here uh, through the way they, they treat me. When she's here, if she has time, so she will help us to um, take care of the garden. So she will help us weeding and also uh, watering the plant. When we have some patient come in who cannot speak English at all, she come here and help us to translate some Spanish. She is really patient. She's a really, really nice person and she's friendly and she's willing to help people. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the hood. <laughs> my whole family, we were all raised here. Wilmington is my home, literally my home. So I went to parochial school right over here. This is my church here. I was baptized. Besides volunteer work in the Tsuchi Wilmington Clinic Center, Connie is also actively involved in the community. The teen center that she established for decades helps local teens to break away from the streets and drugs. This is my community, and, and uh, my community's happy, then we're all happy. Dr. Wu was the one that kind of just uh, started talking to me and uh, changing my ways, uh, my habits of eating, and teaching me how to meditate. And it's very relaxing. I, I'm not as stressed. Uh, I'm not yelling at the kids I work with. You know, guys? Uh, exercising. Yeah. Yo, yo. I know. I'm, yeah. This is my hero. No, no. Right here. No. Yes, you are. This is my hero. <laughs> treat me good. I feel good because of her. Um, our master with the dirty housewife together, before they go to grocery shop, they just put some money in, and then at the end of the month, they collect all the money together to help people who need it. So we let um, Connie know this story. So she's really like the story. When we have patient here, she start telling patient, um, you should donate some money and then you should help people. Because I do help other people, people always give me things. And so all I do is share the wealth. There's a lot of poor people and uh, it's not necessary for them to suffer. I just see the good and I just follow it wherever it is. It, it, uh, so. oh. That's a really nice quality too. Thank you. And uh, that's what makes me feel good. The Wilmington Tsuchi Community Clinic was opened in 2010, specializing in dental and acupuncture services with a focus on preventative medicine. It offers services at low cost to the public as well as free lifestyle and wellness lectures. The clinic seeks to be a friend to the community that Tsuchi is a part of. Forging these relationships is no different for the businesses in the community. Panda Express, a casual restaurant chain serving American Chinese food, is one of them. The founder, Andrew Cheng, not only believes in community activism, but in the self-improvement of its employees. It is with this in mind that he started a partnership with the foundation. In February 2013, Tsuji volunteers hosted a tea party at Panda Express corporate headquarters for over 400 employees. Volunteers work with employees to provide vegetarian meals for the event. To show Tsuji through all senses, sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste. We brought eight of our cooking volunteers to work with their eight staff members. We are providing 400 executive managers with vegetarian meals. We emphasized on a humanistic culture. Today we are really happy to have the chance to work with Tsuji. We are learning from each other and exchanging our culinary experiences. Because vegetarian meals are very important to us as well. A lot of our customers hope to see more vegetables in our dishes. So we are very happy to meet and work with them. Tsuji is a good organization. 
ZRG Foundation is a very powerful organization doing great things with great efficiency too. We feel that with every dollar of donation, ZRG does more than what a dollar can do. Panda Express founder is not only appreciative of Tsuji's charitable works, but he also shares environmental ideals. Scattered around the headquarters are signs of this, from the electric car stations to the prominently displayed recycling options. When volunteers shared Tsuji environmental cups, they were embraced by the employees. I received it from them, so I appreciate the, this cup. And it's easy for me to hold, put it in my pocket, and set a big one. You do it every day? Every single day. Even at home, too. 我们就在想，就说Panda的自己也有些经费啊。we thought Panda has funds to be donated to the community. How can we bring Zerji Foundation to our company and bring our company into Zerji? This is our start. Zerji also has branches in multiple places in the U.S. With our forces combined, we can do more. I think Chairman Cheng is very thoughtful in urging 92 of his senior executives to join the Tsuchi Global Entrepreneur Seminar in Taiwan. From the participation, they can experience Tsuchi's culture and philosophy in person. Hopefully, they will be inspired to bring them back to the U.S. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to go over to the camp and learn something. And, you know, it just there's so many people out there who just give to others and really just feel amazing because of that. When I think about Tsuchi, I think about this amazing organization these managers are willing to know Tzu Chi, so we hope this outreach event can be a good chance to introduce Tzu Chi and its humanistic culture to them. As part of their introduction, Tzu Chi volunteers also played a video showing its relief efforts for Superstorm Sandy survivors. I'm watching the video and really seeing what this organization does for people and just the dedication just takes from the heart just wanting to give oneself so it's really moving really moving to see that there's so many people out there that just really care I'm very touched. My tears fell. The most inspiring was how they made the bamboo banks and taught their children to help others through the bamboo charity bank. Tsuchi spirit is all about helping others. Both Tsuchi and Panda Express look forward to several joint projects already in the works. And with Panda Express seeking opportunities for community activism, it is hopeful that the relationship between the two can grow even more strong and deep. There are potential connections in our lives. It's through our connections and the bridges that we build between ourselves and each other that we become stronger. Thank you for watching us. I'm Neil Sokant and I'll see you soon.